Hey guys, we are going to graph a rational function, and I know this might feel like a lot, but we're going to follow some very specific steps to help you figure out this graph. The first thing I want to do is show you some examples of what these graphs can look like real fast. Here's some examples. Obviously, this does not include every way the graph can look, but this just kind of gives you a good idea of what you're looking at. All right. So when we do these, like I said, we follow some very specific steps. And guess what? I'm going to show them to you. First, we're going to factor. Then we are going to find our asymptotes, vertical and horizontal or slant. And we're going to check for holes. Then we're going to find our X and Y intercepts. And then we're going to figure out the general shape of our graph using our preferred method, which we'll talk about once we get there. So first thing I'm going to do is factor. If you need a factoring review, I will link a video for you in the corner, but I'm just going to tell you right here, right now that this factors to X minus four times X plus two. Guys, I was sick. I'm feeling a lot better, but I feel like my voice is still a little, you know, there you go. So I could have written that out as X times X, right? Technically, but I feel like we're all okay with it. All right, I have factored. Next thing I'm going to do is look for vertical asymptotes and holes. They kind of go together. So there is a hole in my graph. If pretend that down here, instead of an X squared, pretend it was an X plus two down here. So then that and this guy would cancel. If that happens, if you have something cancel on top and bottom, that is when you have a hole in your graph. So in this example, we do not have any holes. I will link an example in the corner if you want to see an example with a graph that has a hole. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do is find our vertical asymptotes. So if you have been doing math in your life, which I'm guessing you have if you're still watching this, you know that we do not deal with zeros in denominators. It's like the black plague in math. So we don't like it. So a vertical asymptote is formed on our graph where the denominator could be equal to zero or where it becomes zero. So in this case, this one's a little different because my denominator is X squared. So if I set X squared equal to zero, that's what you do to find your vertical asymptotes is you set the denominator equal to zero. So if I set X squared equal to zero, I, I mean, it's a zero, so you can do that if you want. We end up with X equals zero, right? So that means if I plug in zero for X, my denominator is going to be zero, which is undefined. So we're going to have an asymptote at zero. So my vertical asymptote is at X equals zero. And we represent that on our graph with a dotted line. If I can find my straight edge, here we go, with a dotted line. Now, obviously this might be kind of hard to see when it's right on the Y axis, but we'll try to make it so you can see it. So my graph will not cross the Y axis in this particular graph. There we go. Now you'll notice there is an S in parentheses here. You will sometimes have more than one vertical asymptote, but in this example, we just have one. All right. The next thing we're going to do is our horizontal or slant asymptote. You won't have both. To figure out what our horizontal or slant asymptote is, we follow some rules. Yes. Everyone loves rules in math. Now this wasn't just made up by some person. This has a reason why these rules work. And I'll link a video in the corner if you want to see an explanation of these rules. All right. For these, we check our degree. The degree is the highest exponent. And we're looking at it in the numerator and the denominator. So on top, my degree, my highest exponent is 2. And in the bottom, it's also 2. So we're looking at their relationship. If the top is bigger than the bottom, we don't have a horizontal asymptote. We check for a slant. If they're equal, like in this example, we're going to divide the leading coefficients. If the top is less than the bottom, then your horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. Okay, so for ours, the top and the bottom degree are equal, so we're going to divide our leading coefficients. Leading coefficients is the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent 
which you might be like, there's not a number there. But if there's not a number there, there's always like an invisible one. So dividing those leading coefficients would be one over one, which just simplifies down to one. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals one. We do not have a slant in this example. So when I have y equals one, that's going to be a horizontal line, right? Which is good because it's a horizontal asymptote at one. And again, I'm going to represent this with a dotted line. Now, something to take a note of is that horizontal and slant asymptotes can actually be crossed sometimes, which I know what you might be thinking, like, why do we have them then? They still help us figure out our graph and help us know where our graph is approaching. Okay, so they're still important, even though they can be crossed. Vertical ones will not ever be crossed. All right, now that we know that, look how far we are. Now we are going to look for our x-intercepts. So to find it, our x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero. And I could do either of these. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to have zero equals x minus four times x plus two over x squared. Now, if I'm solving for x, I want to get rid of that ugly fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared because when I do that, these cancel and x squared times zero is just zero. So I end up with zero equals x minus four times x plus two. And then I'm going to set each of those equal to zero. So I have x minus four equals zero and x plus two equals zero. Add four to both sides, I end up with x equals four and subtract two from each side, I'm going to end up with x equals negative two. All right, those are my x-intercepts. These aren't lines like these guys were, these are points. When I plugged in zero for y, I got two x's. I got four and negative two. So I got four for x when I plugged in zero for y. And I also got negative two for x when I plugged in zero for y. All right, so let's go ahead and show these. So I'm going to have four zero and negative two zero. All right, the next thing I'm going to find is my y-intercept. But if you remember, we have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. So we're actually not going to have a y-intercept. That still helps us kind of understand our graph because we know it's not going to cross there but there actually is none. Now, if you had forgotten that or you just didn't realize that, you could have go ahead and plug in zero for x and you would end up with zero squared in the denominator, which is zero. And then that's undefined, right? Which would help you know, oh, okay, there's no y-intercept. All right. Okay, from here, we are almost done. We just need to figure out what this graph looks like. So the first a strategy you can do is just pick some points, plug them in for X and get a Y. Plug in like negative one or plug in negative seven and see what you get. And then plug in some on this side, maybe plug in two or plug in 10 to figure out what this graph looks like. You can totally do that. Another thing to do is to apply what we know about functions and about asymptotes. So I know that my graph crosses the x-axis here and here, and it doesn't cross it anywhere else. I also know it won't cross this line and that it is approaching this asymptote. So that helps me to know that my graph is going to go something like this on that side and like this, oh gosh, on this side. And we always want to make sure that every value on our graph, literally from negative infinity to infinity, is represented. So these, this arrow will go to negative infinity, right? I'm represented here. I've got that one spot where there's nothing, but I've got the asymptote there because we can't have our denominator be zero. And then it keeps going on this way, literally to infinity. All right, that is my graph. Again, if that felt a little too vague for you, you're not as familiar with these functions yet, 
plug in the points and get some more solid points if that helps you. All right, the last optional step but I would recommend you do it, is to go ahead and plug this into a graphing calculator and make sure your graph matches. It's just kind of a good habit to get into to make sure that you are on the right track and that you're graphing these correctly. All right, but I hope this helped. I will link some other examples um, with you know slant asymptotes and things. I'll link a whole playlist with some more examples if you need them, but I hope this helped, thanks.